Hi everybody! So now we're going to start getting into some of the orders that you guys need to know and the specific species of insects that you need to know. So this, um, this video or webinar will cover um, most of the insects that are on the first page. Um, these are really primitive insects. They should all have chewing mouth parts. They should all have um, incomplete metamorphosis. And for the contest, you need to know what its order name is, what its common name is, where you would find it, its significance, meaning is it a pest, is it beneficial, is it inconsequential, is it variable, it's either a pest or, um, it's either a pest, inconsequential, or beneficial depending on where it's found. You also need to know its type of life cycle or metamorphosis, and then we'll go over some of the other things that you might have to know about them uh, that would be a good idea to know in case you're asked a specific question. So. The first order that we're going to look at are Thysanura. Thysanura are all the silverfish. Another name for silverfish or another type of silverfish in this group is also called a bristletail. <coughs> they are considered a pest. The hoster location is inside the house. They like places that are very humid. That's why it says trunk or closet right there. But inside the house would be the host, meaning that's where they're found. They're really primitive insects. I would know that their body is covered with scales. So if you've ever touched a silverfish, it is it leaves like um, soot, like a, a gray soot on your hands. They're a pest because they feed on starch, and so they'll feed on the kind of the glue and the binding for books and magazines and other things. And so they they are a damage. They will damage books in libraries, and they can be a pest in home where people have a lot of books. They don't need a whole lot of water because they live in areas that are pretty humid. So in your house, you would probably find them in, if you didn't have a lot of books that they were feeding on, you would find them maybe in your laundry room, um, underneath the kitchen sink, in the bathroom, somewhere where it's a little bit wetter, a little bit more humid, not super dry places. What else I would know about them? The way they look, they're kind of a long triangle shape. They have very long antenna. They have these three things called cerci on the hind end. Um, and those are kind of like antenna, but on their hind end, they're they're meant they're kind of an appendage that helps them sense things behind. They have an incomplete metamorphosis, but it's a metabolus. I would remember that. So they're a metabolus. They have young, or you might be able to call them nymphs. But when you look in the um, information for the guidelines for a metabolus insects, they're calling the immature form young. The second order to know. Um, and this is for intermediates and seniors, is Ephemeroptera. So if you're a junior, you can fast forward a little bit. Ephemeroptera are all the mayflies. Ephemeral means short-lived, and mayflies don't live very long. Once they emerge as an adult, they might live hours. They might maybe live a day, but their job is to find a mate, lay more eggs, and continue on with their life cycle. They're considered inconsequential. While they can be a pest at some times or a nuisance because they emerge in mass, overall, um, they're not really of consequence to much of us. And where you would find them would be always near water because they their nymphs are aquatic. They live in the water. So they are an important diet for many fish. So environmentally, they're pretty important in that way. Sizes range. They can be itty bitty and they can be up to two inches long. So they can be very large or very small. The wings are kind of held upright over the back when they're at rest, which makes them different than some other insects. And also tells us this, while they have wings and they hold them up over their back, it's it's not flat up against their back. So we know that they're, they've are they been around a long time because it's not very advantageous. It makes them larger than they actually are to hold their wings up like that and easier for a predator to eat them. They have an incomplete metamorphosis. It's hemimetabolous. Their babies are called naiads because they develop in the water, and it could take a couple weeks to years, and they'll emerge in gigantic numbers when they do emerge. The, the thing that's unique about mayflies is that they have this stage called a sub-imago stage, and I would definitely know what this term is. A sub-imago stage is a immature that actually can fly. It's the only insect that molts after it's able to fly. It's the only insect that kind of has a, a sub, a fake immature stage that will molt again. So the sub imago is who leaves the water, but then that will molt again. And that makes them very unique. You'll only see sub imago associated with Ephemeroptera. 
Odonata is the next order that you need to know, and there's two different species inside of Odonata that you'll need to know. So Odonata are dragonflies and damselflies. I kind of remember Odonata because if you've ever picked up a big dragonfly, they have giant mandibles, they have giant mouth parts. Odonata kind of sounds like orthodontist. Orthodontist is someone that fixes your teeth. Orthodontics, right, fix your teeth. Um, and a big dragonfly will bite like it actually has teeth. So these are considered beneficial because they eat lots of things, especially mosquitoes and things in the water. And the host would be a stream. They're always found around water or in the water in the, if it's the immature. The only damselfly that you need to know is the black winged damselfly. And on the contest, you need to call it the black winged damselfly. They're the only species in Texas that has solid black wings. They're really pretty. Um, you know it's a damselfly because damselflies rest with their wings folded up above their back, just like the ephemeroptera did. If we only have to know one damselfly, if its wings are folded up, it's kind of skinnier, it's got to be the damselfly. Damselflies, all odonata, have an incomplete metamorphosis. We call the immatures naiads because they're found in the water. And as adults and as naiads, they have chewing mouth parts and they are predatory. They eat things. Like I mentioned, the black winged damselfly, any damselfly holds its wings folded over its back like that, so it appears smaller than the dragonfly does. Dragonflies hold their wings out. That tells us that dragonflies are older because it's really not very advantageous. So damselflies have evolved this way to fold the wing over the back so they appear smaller. A dragonfly with its wings spread out is gigantic and it's easy for something to grab just the tip of that wing and they'll be able to take down a dragonfly and eat it. So the only dragonfly that we need to know is a green darner dragonfly. The wings are out this way, it's not black winged, and you're pretty sure it's some sort of dragonfly or damselfly. On the contest it has to be the green darner dragonfly. Pretty large, not really easy to collect. Um, they're considered predators and sometimes they can be a pest because around beehives they'll, they'll be a bunch of dragonflies and they'll be eating the bees out of the, out of the, um, as they fly out of the hive. Plecoptera is our next insect order to know on this group and Plecoptera are stoneflies. Plecoptera is an insect that only intermediates need to know so juniors can fast forward through this part as well. Um, they're considered inconsequential. They really don't do anything good or bad. They're just kind of there. They're also found near the water and um, they have an incomplete life cycle. So this is kind of a harder one for some intermediates and for some seniors because they are not a common insect that we often see, at least in San Antonio area. They're usually found in Central Texas in the hill country, especially if you're close to some sort of a water source. So if you ever go up to the lake close to the, close to Central Texas or in the hill country or um, maybe even the Guadalupe River, you will probably encounter these guys. These guys have wings now folded over the back. And so this is advantageous because you're smaller. You're more, you're more compact and tight and it's harder for a predator to grab a little piece of the wing if it's folded over the body. Incomplete metamorphosis, the naiads are also found inside of the water um, and they're predatory in the water. They both, the adults and the immatures, have chewing mouth parts. 